So for starters, don't take happiness at face value. Right? Happiness is associated with feel good moments and with forcing situations to be good. So we feel good. We want that out of relationships, out of restaurants, out of travel. And I say, if you wanna be, let's say, call it happy, give that up, let things be, roll with the punches, life is full of everything and you just need to experience it all. That was my dad's response when I asked him for words of advice on happiness. But first, let me back things up and explain why he and I were wearing beanies in the middle of summer. Not too long ago, I embarked on a journey to the happiest countries in the world to learn about what makes a joyous life. This was sparked by my own desire to live more meaningfully, as I sometimes feel like I can fall off track by getting too competitive or in my own head. My adventures began in the Netherlands with my friend Sadia, and in this episode, episode two in the series, I went somewhere far more remote. This time, I'm joined by the most important man in my life. Let me introduce you to my dad, a lover of classical music and old radio head on his own spiritual journey to figuring out what life is all about. YouTube moment. <laughs> That's, you're calling it a YouTube moment? He and I went on a road trip through Iceland, the fourth happiest country in the world. And I think we found some answers to my questions that I'm excited to share with you. Not a formula for happiness, per se, but a framework to operate within. Hey, talk to me about the waterfall we're passing. <laughs> <laughs> The first thing that Iceland taught me was the danger of expectations. It's an incredibly unpredictable place. Literally can't see anything. Well, we wanted adventure, didn't we? <laughs> With sunglasses, you have sunglasses <laughs> on. Did I meet him? Yeah, this is bright as fuck. The perfect example of this came to light on our very first day in the country. What we didn't realize was that the weather, like many things in life, cannot be controlled. So what are you thinking? We just got to the volcano site. We just got to the volcano site. Actually, to the parking lot, which means what? Just got to the parking lot of the volcano. What what does that mean? Yeah. means, what do you mean? We're at the parking lot. And what's ahead of us? The volcano. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, hour and a half hike. Can you narrate? Oh, right, 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 right. right. We have a one and a half hour hike ahead of us. Right, I told you everything. (laughs) Wonderful. Just as we were about to begin our hike, we were told that there was zero visibility and that we would have to turn around. I was devastated. So I know we're kind of bummed out. Things are not working out the way we thought. The weather sucks. We didn't check. Now we know to check before we go anywhere. We can figure out other things to do and just kind of like roll with it. Um, Okay, let's try. Let's check it out. Let's do it. It was a reality check on expectations. And thus began the lessons that Iceland would teach me. Yesterday, I was feeling a little bit frustrated because I had all these things that I wanted to do here. There's so much to do and see in Iceland. I wanted to do it all. And so I wrote down this thought late last night. I went, unhappiness is wishing that things were another way. And that is exactly what I felt was happening last night. I felt like I was wishing things were another way. And that was what was making me unhappy. It wasn't the fact that things were going a certain way or not. It was my attachment. Like my, I want this to be another way. So just a reminder, I guess, I mean, clearly I still deal with frustration and unhappiness as much as anybody. But I think putting in words like that just makes it easier to notice it. And then I put alternatively, an alternative to this unhappiness is purpose. On the other hand, is about finding meaning, making sense of how things are. You know, and I like that because it's a shift in perspective in a way, because you're not fighting how things are. You're seeking to understand how things are and how things operate and whatnot. It's sort of like being an observer instead of, I don't know, being some sort of conquistador who's like on this conquest to to make things a certain way. You know, like that is not how how life works, I don't think. Yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on that. The following day, we tried our luck one more time. We're going to the volcano. And the weather's way better, so... Did you just say volcano, sir? I said erupting volcano. Wow, we couldn't see any of this. Our first attempt. What do you think of this? I I don't know how we're gonna make it down. Once we get down there, easy, but... What do you think of this moment, what we're doing right now? uh, I love it. I mean, this is great. We'll figure it out, but yeah, living life. I can't believe where I am right now. (laughs) I was ecstatic when we finally saw the lava, but the thing that was bringing me the most joy was the adventure with my dad. I asked him for words of wisdom on happiness. This is what he said. 
So in our family, we do work around what things mean, right? Life is full of everything and you just need to experience it all. Experience it within yourself and that's how you find what we, what we associate with happiness, with feeling full and good and rich. You've known me growing up, me and restaurants, right? The waiter and the food and if you just like, if I, if I stop judging, having no expectations, saying they're gonna serve me what they're gonna serve me. The waiter will be who they are and let it be. You know, I mean, out of that come pleasant surprises, but also just accepting what's going on and being with the experience of having whatever meal, right? Without expectation. I think that goes for everything. Add expectations to the formula and things get very stressful. You struggle, they get ugly in no time. And so I think we just did that last night. We had a thing, we just had to relax, you know, and just had, let things happen. And that's how you end up having a good time. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> this honestly has to be one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in person with my own eyes. And every few minutes, the volcano just reactivates and it's just shooting out into the sky. The lava is flowing on the other side. Absolutely incredible. I think one of the things that made this trip really, really special was that I was able to have all of these spontaneous, special moments with my dad. And I was able to capture some of them. Okay, so check this out. Look, okay, show the beers. Beautiful beers, right? Tomato beers. Do you taste the tomato? I, I, I want to say that I do. I don't think I do. And something about these spontaneous moments really helped me get clarity, if you will, on some of my ideas revolving around happiness. So I want to dedicate this second portion of this video to that framework that I was referencing at the very beginning. This isn't a formula. Um, I don't think there is a formula. And I think that getting too attached to that can be a way to sort of miss the whole point. But even then, I've always enjoyed thinking about this kind of thing, sort of sharing my thoughts on this. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on what, what I share here. Part two, a framework for a joyous life. We're hoping uh, this will be comfortable enough. Storage right there, goes pretty deep. Our sleeping quarters. So we just got to the town here. I mean, I'm getting to see what it looks like. This is interesting. If you look around, building design, colors. More colorful, yeah. Um, and, and we're like even a distance now from where the crowd is. So yeah, looking yeah. forward to it. Nice. Before my dad and I explored deeper into the island, I got the opportunity to ask a few of the locals what their thoughts on happiness were. This is so awesome. I didn't know if I was gonna meet Icelandic people. Really? Yeah, or I mean, if you've been here for four years, you said, or eight years? Yeah, eight days. Yeah, so you're basically Icelandic. Yeah, kind of. Right? <laughs> I guess I'm just curious what your thoughts are on happiness and if you feel like there's anything about this country that makes it so that it ranks so highly. It's like a really grounding place. Really wanna understand this. Why do you think this is? I think the nature, mostly, for me it's very special, like just all the water, the waterfalls, the, it's so raw and real. I just got to this remote area. Everything is a hike here, but just stunningly beautiful. Look at this. Oh, this is so nice. ¿Qué te parece? Oh, it's heavenly. This is heavenly. And it's so cool because there's nobody here. Hardly. Look where the frick you are. This is insane. I feel like here you have space to be yourself and to explore nature and, and spend time alone in nature and, and really get to connect with yourself. Y eres como que tu propia pileta, cada uno en su lado. Poca gente divina. Una paz y tranquilidad. Oh my goodness. Look at who is watching me from above. Do you see that? Little goats. Oh, three Lord. little goaties. Hold on, hold on. Just literally surrounded by nature. And of course, my little babies. In my opinion, the great killer of joy is attachment. And attachments can look like many different things. One example I often give is that expectations are an attachment to a certain outcome. You're locked in on things being a certain way. And so in a sense, in that kind of line of thinking, I think one of the keys to happiness, to joy, has to be openness, spontaneity, sharing. Basically openness to the things that happen to you. All right, what's going on, son of mine? The star beams haven't been activated yet. Would you put us into hyperspeed, please? We're closing the gap. Where? 
I'm gonna have to activate the final sector. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're currently in a little town called Vik uh, on the southern coast of Iceland. It is almost 11 p.m. right now, and as you can see, it's not dark like at all. It's kind of weird. Last night, it didn't get dark. And look at what is behind me. Like, how can you not be happy in such a gorgeous place? Purpose seems to matter a lot too. Purpose seems really important in having the energy to do things out in the world. Feeling like you're a part of something, contributing somehow. And I think it's a windy journey finding that thing. It's not always clear what it is. Or alternatively, that purpose can change over time. So, what, first of all, what is your name? Uh, a State Lester Batson. <laughs> your dad, you're making this <laughs> worse. I'm documenting, I'm, I'm documenting. You're making I, this I, worse. I, 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 I asked for permission, he doesn't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. No, no, it's fun. <laughs> what are you so, worried about? <laughs> so just, can, can you not? Oh my god, okay. What do you think are the biggest contributors to your happiness? Uh, just knowing there's a purpose. And, there, and you know, if you really think about it, there's no like one purpose. So you have to find your own purpose because there's nothing black and white. Because I, I know, you know, that you're not going to find a purpose trying to look for it in like, you know, things and stuff because things are just things. So you have to try to, you know, make something out of it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. I, you know, I don't know. It's complicated. It makes more sense in my mind. It's such a challenge, man. You know, people say happiness can be such a simple easy thing but it, sometimes yeah. it feels so elusive it's all you know uh, subjective so what we've been trying to do on this trip is to check in with you know ourselves go inwardly and find out what is it that we want to do what's right for us to do and it came to a point where we could have followed the same path back to Reykjavik and travel four and a half hours and see a lot of what we'd seen already and we're like you know it'd be worth to go around the island put in some hours tonight, some hours tomorrow, and uh, experience things we may never see. The combination of colors and uh, textures, I mean, this guy keeps moving. This solid piece of ice, you can see it. Wow. Jeez, the seal. Oh. oh, there's a seal right there. Whoa. Whoa. I wasn't shooting anything for a change. Just watching. Taking it in. Spectacular. Zen master. I'm glad the wind is blowing that way right now. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, looking forward to getting hit by 80 to 100 that degrees Celsius That's water. So I think it's time to pull together all of the pieces to this framework that we've been exploring. I kind of like to think of joy as openness plus purpose minus attachments. I'm not saying this is the answer, you know, but it's a good reminder. You know, it, it reminds me of what matters in life. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Sometimes I get hung up on the dumbest things, and that doesn't get me anywhere. This was an amazing trip, thanks to you, Dad. I'm grateful for your words of wisdom. Tonight and tomorrow morning, we might be late delivering the car, but really, who cares? So, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, who have been amazing supporters of this channel for a very long time and whose support has allowed me to take trips like this one. I have created three classes on there, all of which have received incredible reactions. In those classes, I teach how to intentionally capture your life, how to find your voice as an artist on the internet, and the third one is on how to speak confidently on camera. And of course, Skillshare has built up their catalog over the years to include all kinds of amazing material. My brother has taken a class how to play a guitar, for example, so there's a lot of stuff on there. If you're interested in checking it out, the first 1,000 of you guys that use the link down below can get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. A year-long membership comes out to less than $10 a month. If you do end up taking one of my classes, I would absolutely love to hear what you think. It means a lot to me. And once again, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you to all of you guys for watching. I'll see you soon. What are we about to do, Father? So we are about to, do I look at you or the camera? Never I'll look right here. Um, about to go to the volcano. Uh, we just parked, uh, used the app to, or the, the whatever, the website to pay. Yeah, that, those are unimportant details. The volcano part's the exciting For part. people to know. So that, you know, it's easy to pay, easy to, like, it was easy to get here. Yeah, are you serious? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Isn't that bright and sunny? It's like a sorbet. Yeah. Whoa. Bright and sunny.
like me right when I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Are you a Mahmat? Sayyid Mahmat. Little Spanish French blend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. what's that hanging in the rain? <laughs> it's it's raining. <laughs> it rains. <laughs> it is up. You have some nice wet underwear <laughs> wear, waiting for you. <laughs> we actually slept pretty well. We're up. It's just like how to get going now. All things considered, life's pretty good, I say. Damn good right now. Mm -hmm.